All praises to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Racha Kodash, double honor to the apostles and elders, a great millstone that rule well, laboring the word and doctrine, shallow one in peace, may that be unto the elect of the nation of Israel. It's in Psalm chapter 20, verse 7. It's not verse 6, in fact. It says, Now I know that Yahweh saved his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. And the word for anointed, as we should know, we'll zoom up in on it. Right, Psalm 20 and 7, the word for anointed, oh, 20 and 6, my apologies. The word for anointed is the word mashayach, mashayach. It says anointed, anointed one of the Messiah, messianic prince, of the king of Israel, of the high priest of Israel, of Cyrus. Cyrus is referred to as anointed, now, which proves the Lord uses all nations you know, for his purpose. It says of E of the part of the patriarchs as anointed kings. Right? So there's anointed as a group and there's anointed ones. You know, but the Heavenly Father, you know, did save Yahweh Shai. You know. And the you know the, is for example you have certain doctrines that believe you know the Messiah wasn't, you know, a sacrifice, a, a living sacrifice. You know, but the Messiah did, you know, it was crucified. For why for the reconciliation of let's pull it, <laughs> let's pull it. For someone says that we haven't. All right, second, sorry, Ephesians chapter two, and start at verse fourteen. It says, "For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us." And who is this? Right, the Israelites and the Israelites in a Gentile state of mind, simple as it is, right? Not between you know Israel and all the other nations, because that was never you know they were never together in the beginning. What makes sense? You know, a family. You know, let's put it in in simple terms, a blue family. You know, which half of the blue ones you know started doing different things that the blue ones have done traditionally, and then you have a green family. Now, does it make more sense to say, oh, the green family are coming back together with the blue family when they were never together? Or does it make sense that the blue family, you know, the ones that were going astray and doing things that blue people, <laughs> you know, I'm just using that as a category. You know, it's not about skin colour, it's about the lineage, you know, but this is just an example. But the blue family doing things, certain ones of them doing things that the blue family didn't traditionally do, now they're doing it. Does it make more sense to say the blue family are coming back together or the blue and green family are coming back together when they were never together in the first place? Right, for he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. You know, and this is this was prophecy. You, know, you, you can say we're pulling it out of context, but you, you don't want to go into the context with us. For them that are aware of the prophecy, you know, if you want to remain in your delusion, you don't want to go into you know a, a conversation with us so here we are Ezekiel 37 and verse 22 it says and I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel and one king shall be king to them all and there shall be no more two nations neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all right so this is a, of course the kingdom split under Solomon you know that's the another you know aspect of the bringing back together so it was always prophesied Israel will be coming back together, specifically the elect. All the nation in the kingdom, but specifically the elect, right? They would come back together. The middle wall of partition, you know, the bringing them back together was always focused on Israel, you know, not every single body on the earth, because everybody in the earth was never, you know, together like that. You know, the Tower of Babel, when they came, you know, and tried to unite in, you know, another philosophy, another doctrine, the Heavenly Father. Had a punishment for that. In fact, let's let's hit a bit bit more of Ephesians you know, before it's claimed that whatever's claimed. Right, having a Ephesians two and fifteen, having abolished in the flesh, sorry, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make himself of twain one new man, so making peace, 
and that he might reconcile both unto the Most High in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. Right, reconcile. Zoom in upon this word. Reconcile. All right, first, let's get it in the anglais. Reconcile. Reconcile and transitive in reference to persons to restore to union and friendship after estrangement or variance. Also of the Most High, or anointed, you know, God or Christ, just read it for him. Restore mankind's sinners to favor or grace. Nowhere in the book does it talk about mankind. You know, it might, maybe it talks about all men. You know, all ye men. What does it say in there? Acts, 20, Acts 2, sorry. It's going to sideline here. Just to prove a point. Acts 2 will say, oh man, it's talking about everyone, everyone, everyone. Right, Acts 2 and 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. <laughs> Verse 22. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Yahweh of Nazareth, a man approved of the Most High among you, by miracles and wonders and signs, which the Most High did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know, him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of the Most High, you have taken, and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom the Most High hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. Right? So whosoever shall call upon the, the name of the Lord, and then the next verse is, Ye men of Israel. So it's within the context of who's it being addressed to? The Israelites. Right? Even in the verse verse. The verse verse. The first verse. Right? And when the day of Pentecost, which is what? The Feast of Weeks, the Israelite, or the Jewish you know, the pertain to the Jews, who are Judah, a tribe of Israel, right? When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Who were? Let's read verse 5. Read in between if you want, but just skip down for time's sake. There's no context change. Verse 5. And then we're dwelling at Jerusalem. Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. So that proves that Jews were in every nation. Right? It's not just... There wasn't just Israelites living in Israel, to put it like that. Anyway, moving forward, the word reconcile in the Greek from Ephesians 2 and 16, and they might reconcile both into the Most High and one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. The word reconcile, well, listen to Strong's G say it. Strong's G 604, apakatalasa, Right. To reconcile completely. To reconcile back again, to bring back, to <laughs> to bring back a former state of harmony. Point me in the book when Jake, right, when Israel, when the children of Israel were a, a former state of harmony, you know, with any other nation. You know, there was peace, but there was never harmony. Now, why do I say that? For example, under King Solomon, you can say, right, there was peace. Harmony, combination of tones pleasing to the ear, going to agreement, concord of sound, right? means of joining. When was Israel joined to the other nations and the Heavenly Father approved of that? You know, more time when they were joined, they were joined into the customs of, of other gods, right? So the Heavenly Father, knowing the idolatry, you shouldn't have any other gods before him, written in the Ten Commandments, he's not going to be approving of that. So prove, you know, where there was a state of harmony between Israel and anyone outside of Israel. You, know, you go to the Gentiles, guess what? Those Gentiles are Israelites. To reconcile, so kata, did we even hear him say it? Yeah. Kata lasso on this one. To exchange, exchanges coins for others of equivalent value. To reconcile those who are at variance. For example, the Israelite foreigners and the Israelites keeping the customs. Right, return to favor with, be reconciled to one. To receive one into favor. Right, and that was the second part. The prefix is apo of separation, local separation. You know, it's there. I'll leave it on screen. It's a mouthful to read. <clears throat> For a little gain when you can pause it. Right? So Proverbs, not Proverbs, Psalm 20, verse 7. Some trust in chariots. And summon horses, but we'll remember the name of Yahweh our power. Yeah, Yahweh Alahaya Nawa. Right, Yahweh our power, power our. Right, so we need to trust in Yahweh Shai, man. We need to trust in the one that was anointed 
the Heavenly Father gave, you know, to, to be that peace, to be that reconciliation. Right? Not trusting in you know, any other means to get that. That's the only way. Isaiah 31 and 1. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help and stand horses and trust in chariots because they are, they are many and in horsemen because they are very strong. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek Yahweh. Yet he also is wise and will bring evil and will not call back his words, but will arise against the house of the evildoers and against the help of them that work iniquity. So knowing that, you know, who should you be on the side of? Right, Isaiah 55 verse 6. Seek ye Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai while he may be found, call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto Yahweh and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts Neither are your ways my ways, saith Yahweh. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts and your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish the thing which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Right? See, how about Hashem, how Shai is going to have it said and have it done. Right? Just as we, you know, as his children, princes, should take that on. You know, there's always been an emphasis on a man's word. If you say it, do it. Right? If you say it, do it. That's the point. Right? Integrity. And knowing that, you know, if we say we come to this truth, you, you start building the tower, man. So if you start building the tower, you start putting your hand to the the plowshare, you take you, you know, you're looking back, you're not worthy of the kingdom. The Messiah said that. You know, so we need to act in in accord, you know, and take this grace period of reconciliation seriously. Alright, not use a, our liberty as a cloak of maliciousness. Okay? So I'll leave it there. On to the next one, Lord willing. All praise to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakhakudash. Shalom.